Hello again everyone at CITC. We've got another section of our uh, cultural subsistence instructable and this one's going to be on what to do with the hide. We use the hide for a lot of different things in the fab lab. Uh, there's a lot of cultural projects that uh, we can incorporate the machines with, um, which is a really cool variation of doing this uh, from our traditional standpoint. Uh, and um, so we'll learn a lot of the traditional skills of processing this, but then we'll also use other modern methods to making this go faster. And uh, so we can get a full, well-rounded um, lesson on uh, new age and old age technology. First thing we're gonna do with this hide, once we got it, uh, this is fresh off the caribou. We did freeze it, so we had a little extra time to get to it, um, but it's all thought out. Still has got the meat on it, and uh, we're gonna go through stabilizing it, and in this process, we're gonna do the method of dry scraping, uh, which is racking it up on a frame and letting it dry, and then um, we'll remove the meat before we let it dry, but then after the fact, once it's all hard, then we can either decide to take the hair off or leave the hair on and soften the hide or not soften the hide. Uh, whatever stage we keep it in, um, it's useful for different projects. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the hide out flat. Um, we've got a little bit of meat on it, we've got a little bit of fat on it, uh, but we want to build a frame and we're going to stretch it out on that frame kind of like a drum. What will make our life easier is if we tr first trim the outsides of the hide, uh, of the legs that we kept on, and uh, of any cuts that kind of um, did, a, did a little bit of uh, variance. And so just like basically all we're doing is trimming off a lot of the tails and flaps and we want to make it as circular, well rectangular with like circular edges. So soft edges and rectangular. Uh, the more you can get it like that, the easier it's gonna be for racking it up and processing it and all of that. We're gonna trim those things off first and we can still use those for projects. Uh, so we're gonna save them. Uh, primarily the legs we can use for mucklucks. So we've got the hide all trimmed out. As you can see, it's much more, uh, more rounded. It still follows some of the contours. Um, what we're gonna do is uh, we are going to rack it up to this frame that we built. Now the frame, um, you don't want it too thin. Two by fours for a caribou hide is, uh, is kind of stretching it. It's a little bit on the thin side, but it's also a lot lighter uh, to manipulate it. But it will bend the two by fours just a little bit. If you want to go with thicker, you can use saplings. Traditionally, uh, even just two saplings put uh, between two trees. Um, lashed to the trees, you can then uh, uh, rack it up around those poles and around the trees. What we want to look for with any frame that we make is we want to get about six inches to a foot on either side of the caribou. So around all the sides, you know, we want about six inches of clearance on each side because the hide will stretch a little bit. Caribou is a little bit thin. So I don't like to stretch it as much as I like to stretch really thick hides. I feel like you can actually stretch caribou a little bit too much because then they get really thin when they dry and a little bit harder not to puncture when you're trying to tan them. And now we're gonna pop holes about every three, four inches with thicker hides, maybe every about six inches. Uh, and then also about a, at least an inch away from the edge of the hide. And we're gonna do that all around so that then we can string it up. It took off a flake of obsidian. It's a rock that's volcanic glass. Um, comes down to a one molecule thin edge. Uh, it's extremely useful for cutting, especially when dealing with meat and hide. And so I removed one little flake and we're gonna trim the hide up with it. And then we're also gonna slice the little holes all the way around it so we can string the hide up, kind of like a drum. Now, we, uh, we need to put these holes in, and one really quick way to put holes in um, is to have a dog bite through in certain sections. You just gotta kinda open their mouths and chomp them in the areas you need. Or you can use an obsidian flake. Uh, with this, I just like to take a branch, or with this we had just a little piece of wood, and put it under the skin so that there's a corner. Um, 
and it kind of exposes the skin. It puts it in a little U shape, so all you have to do is just slice straight across, and now I have a little hole. So then I just move my stick down another three or four inches, get it right on the corner, and about an inch in, I make another little slice. And this one, all we need is just a, a hole big enough for our rope. Now we've got the holes sliced, we've got the rope tied up. We're gonna stretch it out kind of like we stretch out a drum. Um, you start on one end and uh, go down that quadrant and then go to the other side, go down that quadrant, pick another side, go down that quadrant, and same with the last side. And so you will kind of like make a little star pattern and that'll help stretch everything out. And then after um, you've gotten the lacing through all the holes, then you just wanna go back up and re-tighten everything. Um, that is if you wanna get your hide really tight. For us, we just wanna to wanna to kinda of keep it loose. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna pull too hard um, because uh, the caribou hide is a little bit thin. So after we get the hide all stretched out and straight, that'll make it a lot easier to cut all these meat chunks off. So getting these meat chunks off, we can use the leg from the caribou that we got. Uh, we can use some stone. We could use a metal blade. Uh, we could also use a dog as we see right here. Um, he's doing a great job at just pulling meat chunks off. So uh, there's, we have a lot of options. Ah. And we're back with the next step of this hide process. Uh, we've got a lot of projects that we are excited about doing with it and we just need to get it to a stage that is useful for us. Right now, as you can see, we have all kinds of hair still on it. We have taken a little bit of hair off of one section right here and we just need to get the rest of that and the rest of that. So traditionally, we can use stone tools or metal hand tools and we can scrape the hair off in the grain layer but in this situation, because we have lots of hides to take care of, we are going to speed up the process a little bit and use an angle grinder with an 80 grit disc that is a little rounded and it seems to work really well. You have to be very careful with it. You don't want to go through the hide. And one thing you want to do is kind of take it off with the grain. Uh, so whatever direction the hair is going, you want to come from the back of the hair and take off hair towards the direction the hair's going. So in that case down there, we'll go that way. And in this case right here, we went this way. Once we get all the hair off, we can use that for any kind of rawhide projects, such as masks or rattles or drums or a lot of different types of things, really. And if we wanted to leave the hair on, sometimes we do projects like dance fans where we use the necks. It's all very useful. As far as the backside goes, we had already scraped off the meat and that looks all good. Sometimes we have little bits of remnants left over, so we might hit the back of it, the meat side, with another light sanding. Um, but we can also do that as we cut little sections off and clean them up to the level of cleanliness that we need for different projects.